Hello, welcome to Sonography Radiology Training Channel. This series of videos is a scientific presentation about fetus ultrasound. This is the second video in this video series about a cogenic amniotic fluid. Amniotic fluid is the liquid that surrounds a developing fetus in the amniotic sac and is usually clear to pale yellow in color. Amniotic fluid composition is complex with many maternal and fetal constituents. The composition of the amniotic fluid changes with the gestational age with an average pH of 7.2 and specific gravity in a determined range. A cogenicity of amniotic fluid indirectly represents the size, number, and distribution of particles in amniotic fluid and in turn turbidity of amniotic fluid. This could give rise to ultrasound detection of echogenic particles, also known as amniotic fluid sludge or appearance of a homogeneously echogenic amniotic fluid. Amniotic fluid sludge is a dense aggregate of particulate matter. Sludge has been proved to be an independent risk factor for preterm birth, microbial invasion of the amniotic cavity, and histologic chorioamnionitis. Cogenic amniotic fluid is an uncommon finding on obstetric ultrasound. Incidence in the first and second trimester about 4% and in third trimester the incidence rises to 8%. What is the etiology of echogenic amniotic fluid? Echogenic amniotic fluid can be seen in normal pregnancies but can also be seen in association with various conditions. In first trimester, the most common cause is hemorrhage into the amniotic cavity. This is an example of first trimester of pregnancy with hemorrhage, which leads to early premature rupture of membranes at 15 weeks and spontaneous preterm delivery at 28 weeks of gestation. But there were no maternal complications during the pregnancy. In second trimester, there are many causes of echogenic amniotic fluid. The most common cause is Wernix caseosa, which is a fatty substance that covers fetus and neonates skin. Another cause is meconium contamination. This is a good opportunity to have a brief overview of meconium preternitis ultrasound findings. One of the findings is fetal ascites, which is hypoechoic fluid, intra-abdominal calcified lesions. But here is an important point. If there are calcified lesions, present cystic fibrosis is unlikely. Dilated bubble loops may be due to small bubble atresia and dilated stomach may be due to ileus. Another finding is pseudocyst formation, which is omentum vault of the meconium collection, resulting in the formation of a cystic mass. Another finding, dense mass, the intense chemical reaction causes the formation of a dense mass with calcium deposits that eventually seal up the perforation. Another finding is hydrocell valvular swelling due to passing down of meconium through the patent process vaginalis. This image shows prenatal ultrasound showing a scrotal mass with a normal right testicle and associated bowel containing inguinal hernia and also hydrocell. In color Doppler, there is no follow in the mass. An intraoperative photo shows here meconium pseudocyst which attached to the upper pole of the testicle. And the last findings of the meconium preternitis is polyhydraminous. Another cause of echogenic amniotic fluid in the second trimester is hemorrhage into the amniotic cavity and also a cranial anencephaly sequence 
Another cause is Harlequin ichthyosis. Congenital ichthyosis represents a group of conditions with varying severity. The most severe form is Harlequin ichthyosis. In Harlequin ichthyosis, infants are often born prematurely and are noted to be encased in hard, thick skin that appears armor-like and severely restricts movement. The thick skin results in deformities of the face, head, and extremities. Another cause is epidermolysis bullosa lethalis. Epidermolysis bullosa with pyloric atresia or Carmi syndrome is very rare and lethal syndrome, which is characterized by fragility of the skin and mucous membranes with blistering with minimal or no trauma, congenital pyloric atresia, and genitourinary anomalies. And also in patients with higher concentration of matter Maternal serum alpha fetoproteins may be seen occasionally in meiotic fluid. In third trimester, another one, the most common cause is vernix caseosa and meconium contamination. Now, please pay attention to these final teaching points. When the clinical non stress tests and biophysical profiles are reassuring, the mere presence of hyperechogenic amniotic fluid in ultrasound imaging cannot be considered as a marker of meconium and fetal distress. Sludge has been proved to be an independent risk factor for preterm birth, microbial invasion of the amniotic cavity, and histologic chorioamnionitis. Now, I suggest two others of my videos that are close to this video in terms of matter, and thank you for your attention.